So regardless of what the need is, you bring them here. I believe that Jesus is here. We don't even have to invite him here. He is here. And he will do the works that we believe him for. Today, I, I want you to turn in your Bible to St. Matthew's Gospel, if you will, please. I'm reading from the 15th chapter of Matthew's Gospel. And I must be honest with you, this is one of my favorite stories in the life of Christ. I have preached from this so many times, but every time you go back and you begin to pray, God always gives you something fresh. And I'm reading from verse 21. Listen carefully as I read it, please. Matthew chapter 15. And I'm beginning at verse 21. Then Jesus went thence and departed into the coast the coasts of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. But he answered and said, I am not come but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel, then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not me to take the children's bread and to cast it to dogs. Then she said, or and she said, Truth, Lord, for even the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. She got what she wanted. A woman reaching the stage of greatness. Great is thy faith. Never once did he tell Peter James or John, great is thy faith. Not once did he tell, according to Scripture, anyone of Israel, great is thy faith. But here is a woman who comes from the seacoast town of Sire, Tyre and Sidon, an outcast, a Gentile dog, if you will. And she breaks down barriers and she received the highest accolade that ever comes from the lips of Jesus. Oh, woman, great is thy faith. When I find this, I want to devour it. I want to chew on it. I want to digest it. I want to find out how and
and what she did so that it put her in this kind of a category. She went home to a new daughter. She received what she came for. Now, so many of us, and I've been preaching now since 1955 in the evangelistic field. I pastored five years prior to that. But I have seen people come. I've seen a few receive, but I've seen many go that have not received. I've seen sinners come, and I've seen sinners repent. And I've seen them leave the service a child of God. But yet I've seen others who rejected the call of God. And they walk out worse than what they've come in. There are always some that receive, and there are some that do not receive. I've seen them wheeled in to a service, and I've seen them get out, get up out of the wheelchair, and I've seen them push their wheelchairs out of the service. But yet I've seen others who are wheeled in, and they are wheeled out. And my heart always goes out to the one that seemingly cannot receive anything from God. And I want to I preach to you today, you that are watching by television and you that are here in this vast audience at Lakewood Church here in Houston, Texas. If you are in that category, you have prayed and the heavens seem as brass. And still you have not received an answer. You've gone, gone into evangelistic meetings. We've had people here today that's traveled 600 miles to be in the service. You do not have to go home the same way you came. There is a miracle right here because Jesus is here. I want you to give me your good ear and let this word not only come into your ear, but let it drop into your heart so that you can become a doer of the word. Don't be guilty of being a hearer only. And if you will be a doer of the word and do what this woman did, you will walk out of here singing a new song. I got just what I wanted from the Lord. What do you want? What do you want? You just flip that TV set on, looking for Johnny Carson, but instead you got me. <laughs> Hang in there. I got your answer. Whatever your need is, Jesus is the answer to your problem. You may have a financial problem. You may have a family problem. You may have a physical problem. You may have a problem on your job. Maybe the medical world has done everything they could for you and nothing has allowed you to get better, but rather you are growing worse. I have your answer today. Jesus turned to this woman, and I want to base my words on his answer. Oh, woman, great is thy faith. And I have pointed a few things that made this woman great. Jesus declared it. Let's bow our heads and pray first. Father, we thank you for the reading of the Holy Scriptures. And I pray that the anointing of God will mantle every soul in divine presence. And let that anointing destroy the yoke. Destroy the yoke of sin, sickness, disease, infirmity, drug addiction, alcohol, and perversion. Let it be a time of receiving. I come against every opposing force to faith. In the name of Jesus, I come against all fears, all doubts, every trace of unbelief. Let faith have her perfect work and let it reach a stage of greatness to where they can reach out and touch God in Jesus' name. Don't allow one soul to leave disappointed. And we'll praise you eternally in Jesus' name. 
And everybody shouted amen, amen and amen. According to this scripture reading that I have read in your hearing, this woman that Jesus is talking about symbolizes and she personifies this great faith. She reached the knee plus ultra of faith. There's nothing beyond. She reached the apex. She received the supreme accolade from the lips of the master. Great is thy faith. And as I began to ponder this story and begin to study it, some things jumped out at me that I wrote down that if we will recognize why this woman received this accolade from Christ, I believe that you and I that are in need can come to the same end that she did. Number one, first of all, this woman had a great problem. Everything about her was great, even her problem. And you that are seated here today and you that are watching by television, you say, well, preacher, that's me. Then you're at the first step. You are on the verge of a miracle because of the greatness of your problem. This woman did not come for herself, but she came for her daughter. She cried out, I have a daughter. Lord, have mercy on me. My daughter is at home grievously vexed, tormented of a devil. This was her problem. She didn't even bring it to him. She came to represent the problem. She said, I'm not going to leave without an answer. And with this kind of an attitude, I believe you're going to walk out of here with your answer, whatever it may be. She had a problem not only of her daughter being at home grievously vexed of a, uh, of a devil, but when she comes to Jesus and speaks it verbally, hear me, she ran into another problem. He answered her not a word. Here you are, you've been told all you have to do is ask and you shall receive. And here you are coming to Christ. She makes her request known and this is unlike Jesus. He answers her not a word. The problem is growing. The medical profession can do her no good. She heard about this man called Jesus. She crosses over the border to see him. She doesn't belong to the household of Israel. And he won't even talk. Have you ever been there? Oh, you say, preach, that's me. The heavens seem like brass. I call, I prayed. But there's no answer. Well, keep on asking. Don't stop. That's what it means. Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. Jesus said, every one that asketh receiveth. Every one that seeketh findeth. And every one that knocketh to him it shall be open. I'm trying to encourage you. I don't care how long you've been asking. Keep on asking. That's what it is in the Greek. Every one that asketh, asking you shall receive. Keep on asking. Don't stop. But keep on. I am not giving up. Devil, you're a liar. This is my day for a miracle. And I will not be denied. Can you shout amen? amen? Turn around in your seat and tell somebody, don't give up. <laughs> Just tell them. Don't give up. Don't give up. Tell somebody else, don't give up. Now tell yourself, don't give up, self. 
Hallelujah. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. He answered her not a word. What is your problem? What's the greatness of your need? Some of you may have flipped that TV set on. You say, I'm hooked on drugs. There's no way out. Jesus is the way out. You may be bound by alcohol, but Jesus is the way out. If your problem has reached the state where it is a great problem, you are the greatest candidate for a miracle from God. I put a tent up in Boston, Massachusetts a number of years ago. And I'll never forget this precious man who came to testify. He said, Brother Shambach, I, I never met you before. He said, I was an atheist. I didn't believe in God. But he said, I was making about $700 a week. But he said, I had a problem. And he says, the problem, and these words kind of pricked in my own heart. He said, the problem that I had became greater. And it became greater. And it became greater. My problem was alcohol. And he said, every dollar that I was making would go into booze. I had three children. I couldn't afford to put milk in their bottles, but I could afford to put booze in my bottle. And he said, I had a very good job, but an employer will put up with that for just so long. And he said, I lost my job. We moved into a new home, bought new furniture. Everything was new from the basement to the attic. And when I lost my job, I lost the income. I lost my bank account. I lost our home. I lost my furniture. I lost my wife. I lost my children. I believe we can come to the conclusion he had a great problem. He is down to zilch. The bank account is double zero. Here he said, I am sitting in the home. My wife is gone. The children are gone. Everything I love is gone from me. And I feel so alone, alone that I made a miserable wreck out of my life. I am in trouble. I have done everything that I could, but there's no hope. There's only two things I have left that I can call my own, and one is a 38 revolver, and another one is a transistor radio. And he said, I'm sitting there on an orange crate in this new home with bare floors waiting for the man to come for the key. This is my last day, 12 o'clock noon. He will be here. Waiting for him to put me out. Furniture's gone. Job's gone. Wife's gone. Children's gone. Money's gone. Everything's gone. And he said, I was sitting there with that 38, and I pulled the, tr pulled the hammer back, and I put the barrel of that 38 to my head. And I said, this is the only way out. And then the thought hit me, what if the neighbors hear the shot? I botched everything else in my life. I may even botch my own suicide. He said, I'll fix that. I'll turn the radio on and get some noise. And when he flipped the radio on, he wanted noise, so he got noise. Do you know who came on? Brother Shambach. He wanted noise. And he said, you were saying, that foul demon that has you tormented, that demon of lust for alcohol, he said, I reached for the radio to turn it, and you said, and I pulled my hand back. Now, my son and I make these tapes up months and months ahead of time, but the Holy Ghost knows who has need of it when that is aired. And I was preaching about 
demon spirits. And this particular day, I was preaching about the demon of lust for alcohol. Just what he needed. He didn't know it was a demon spirit. And he sat there intently listening to what he was listening, on, listening to on the radio. And he puts the 38 down and tears begin to well up in his face. And he said, this preacher said, if you want to be delivered from alcohol, put your hand on that radio when I pray and those devils are going to come out of you. This man is an atheist. He didn't believe in God, but he sure believed in devils because he had some of them. And he said he reached down and grabbed that small portable radio and clinged it to his breast. And he said, when you prayed that prayer on the radio, he said, I don't know what it was. He knew no theological terms. He didn't have the religious jargon. But he said something on the inside of me began to swirl. It went down to the bottoms of my feet, turned around and shot up my legs, through my stomach, right up to my chest, up into my head, round my brain, and all of a sudden it came out of my mouth. I don't know what it was, but he said, I haven't drunk any alcohol from that day forward. Woo! He had a great problem. And he said, here, when I found out you're bringing the tent, he said, I had to come out and tell you the story. I said, you never wrote me a letter? No, never did. And I said, this took place how long ago? Five years ago. And I haven't heard about it. And here I am standing there weeping, rejoicing with him. And I said, tell me the end of the story. There got to be an end. Oh, he said, there is an end. He said, I didn't know what this was that I got a hold of. And I started visiting different churches in the area. And he said, there was one church I visited. It sounded like you, the preacher. And he said, I sat there and listened. And he was talking about the Holy Ghost. And he said, I ran to that altar. I didn't know there was anything. I never knew there was a Holy Ghost. But he says, when I got to that altar and threw up my hands, something came all over me. And he said, it wasn't like what came out of me, but something started on the inside. And it came out of here. And I started speaking in another language, and I found out I've got the Holy Ghost. Didn't know what it was. He said, God bless me with a better job. He didn't give me the same job back. He gave me something better. Instead of making 700 a week, he said, I'm making 1,000 a week now. He said, my wife came back. The children came back. I have a bank account restored. We bought a brand new home, and he says there's no mortgage on it. We paid for it. God has blessed me going in. God has blessed me coming out. I am blessed of the Lord because I heard the truth on radio. In the depths of my problem, I cried out to God, and he heard my prayer. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Don't give up. You have a great problem. You may have a problem in the home, in your family, in your finances. You may be tormented, but I've got your answer. Jesus is the answer to your problem, and he will reverse the situation. If you believe it, shout amen with me. Now, she not only had a great problem, in order for me to get through with this today, I find out that she had a great courage also. Not only a great problem, but a woman has a little more courage than men. Ladies, you missed a good spot to holler hallelujah. Men have a tendency to give up, but this woman had a courage. It says that she came from Canaan. She was a Canaanitish woman, a woman despised by the Jews, but it says she crossed over. I love this. She crossed over the racial barrier. The Jews called 
Gentiles dogs. Jesus said, I'm come only for the lost sheep of Israel. This woman said, I'm going to get me a miracle. That's my kind of woman. She crossed over the racial barrier, over those racial lines. She came over the border. She came out of the coast. She left her fears. She left her doubts. And she left every trace of unbelief behind. And she sought to go to Jesus. And she manifested a courage that, that you cannot find in the Word of God. She refused to give up. And she came to Jesus. Keep your Bible open to that 15th chapter of Matthew. A woman of Canaan came out of the coast, the same coast, and cried unto him, saying, Lord, have mercy on me, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with a devil, but he answered her not a word. But yet this woman showed courage enough to go right to him and cried out with a loud voice. If she would have come into some meetings today, she never would get to the man of God. The ushers would have her someplace else. But this woman's not going to be denied. She lost every trace of fear. She lost all of her doubts. He's my only hope left. I've heard about this great prophet. I've heard about this man that's going about doing good, healing the sick and the disease. I've got to have an answer. If you are going to receive from God, you've got to get rid of your fears. Some of you who are church people, don't turn the TV set off. Your own pastor don't believe in divine healing. And we've got to break that thing down. Even when we preach on television, I don't care who tells you that Jesus does not heal the sick. Let every man and let every devil be a liar, but let God be true. Amen. Hebrews 13, 8 says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, he's the same today, and he is the same forever. What he did yesterday, he'll do today, and what he does today, he'll do tomorrow. Amen. He's looking for somebody who will believe his word. Put me down as a believer. I said, put me down as a believer. I believe what God said. We're going to break down these barriers. We're going to show God a courage that we're going to press our way through. If he's not going to touch me, then I'm going to touch him. I'm going to have what I've come for. Now, when you muster up this kind of courage, that you made up your mind, you're going to go to God, that you're going to receive a miracle in your life, the next one, they fall in line. The third one is, she had a great trial. This is when the test comes. Can you imagine when she made up her mind, she's going to cross the racial barrier? This man's a Jew. The Jews despise you. You don't belong to this religion. Can you imagine what was going through her mind while she was making her approach to where Jesus was? You can't get to him. It's not for you. But she kept pressing her way. And one trial after another, when she finally gets there, she makes a nuisance of herself. You know, women saying amen now. But she made a nuisance of herself, and the disciples couldn't take it. And the disciples come to Jesus and says, can't you get rid of her? She's bothering us. Even the disciples are presenting a trial and a test. She come to receive something from Jesus, but those that he handpicked, 
Those that he gave power over diseases to cast out devils, they seemed to be working against her. She had a great trial. And then when she gets to Jesus, he said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the household of Israel. Here you made the trip for nothing. I told you you don't belong to the church, and now Jesus is seemingly adding to her trial. You come to me for help, and I'm telling you, I've come only for the lost sheep of Israel. That's enough to discourage a Pentecostal <laughs> or a charismatic. Maybe the Lord doesn't want me to have it, but she refused to give up. Thank God for this kind of a woman. Thank God for this kind of a spirit. Regardless of the test, regardless of a trial that comes, it seems like she always had an answer. Isn't that just like a woman? When she manifested that great courage and going through that great trial, she had a great attitude. What an attitude. Keep your Bible open. He answered and said, this is Jesus talking in verse 24, I am not sent but unto the lost Sheep of the house of Israel. Listen, listen. I love it. Then came she and worshipped him. Woo! You say, I've tried everything, preacher. Try worshipping him. You may feel like an outcast, but if you want him to touch you, begin to worship him. That's what we come to church for. We come to worship Him. We're not here to lift up a dignitary, but here, here to worship our God. He said, wherever two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. He wants your worship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just thank you, Jesus. Put your hands up and just say, thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I started a church in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Some years ago, the church is still there. My wife's brother pastors that church. And I'll never forget, I was preaching there on one Sunday night. And there was a precious lady on this side of the altar. A great altar service. And she was sort of shut in with God on her knees and she was distressed I could tell by the weeping and the cry that was coming from her spirit as well as her voice and over in this corner and it was kind of getting to me when all of a sudden all I heard was please Jesus please Jesus now you know worship in that you ain't no beggar when you're a child of God, but she was begging, please, Jesus. She did it one night. She did it the second night. Did it the third night. I couldn't take it no more. <laughs> I didn't do it publicly, but I went over to her. She was still moaning and groaning, please, Jesus. And I knelt beside her, and I put my arm on her shoulder, and I said, change one word. I said, get rid of the please and say, thank you, Jesus. That's all it takes. Thank you. So she listened to me, but she was saying, please, for so long. She just changed the word and went on. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Same old monotone. Thank you, Jesus. I said, oh, Lord, please change that to him. And after about the fifth time, thank you, Jesus. And then it got out of her mind and it sunk down into her spirit. And then she started saying, thank you. Hey! Thank you. Hey! 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. This woman had a great attitude. She came and worshipped him. And I'll tell you, God can't stand all that praise, folks. I said he can't stand all that praise. When you begin to worship him, you're going to get what you come for. And while she was worshipping him, she cried out, Lord! Oh, he can't deny that. Most of us, when we come to the Lord, is gracious Heavenly Father, you know what we have need of. Yeah, he does, but it sounds like you don't. <laughs> Lord, help me. I'm the one that needs the miracle. I'm the one that needs help. We first started about 30 minutes ago. You told somebody, I believe you're going to get a miracle. Did you tell them that? Yeah. Turn around to them now and say, uh-uh. Today's my day for the miracle. Lord, help me. <laughs> ah, this is my day. This is the day I'm going to get saved. This is the day I'm going to be healed. This is the day I'm going to be delivered. This is the day I'm going to be filled with the Holy Ghost. This is my day. Lord, help me. This is me. I'm the one that needs help. I came for the miracle. Oh, hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Hallelujah. While she had that great attitude, Jesus spoke to her. She said, or he said, it's not meat for me to take the children's bread and give it to dogs. Now, Pastor Osteen called you a dog. You wouldn't come back here next week. Jesus looked at that woman and said, It's not meat for me to take children's bread. He called the Israel's Jew, uh, ch children. Children's bread and give it to dogs. In the original Greek, it's little puppies that yap around the table. She not only had a great attitude, or rather a great thought. This is the next one. She not only had a great attitude, but she had a great thought. And she got a hold of his words and said, True Lord, I am one of them little puppies. I am a dog. But she said, even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Do you know what she was saying? She was saying, Lord, that's what I come here for. I've been watching your children and your children aren't eating too good. It may be children's bread, but they're fussing over the doctrine of it. They're not eating. And a lot of it's being wasted. So I'm just hanging around like a dog, and I'm picking up the crumbs that fall from the master's table. Ooh That's what happened to Jesus. He, he, it knocked him back about 10 feet. What an attitude. This woman refused to accept the status quo. Somebody says, what status quo? That's the mess you're in. That's what status quo is. She refused to stay in that mess and everything Jesus said 
to try to discourage her, she grabbed a hold of it and turned it around. And she said, I am not leaving here until I get what I come for. And if you're not going to allow me to sit up to the table and have my own plate, then I'm going to hang around here and pick up the crumbs. Oh, there's a great message here, folks. Healing is the children's bread. If you're a child of God, you have no business being sick, diseased, or afflicted because 2,000 years ago, Jesus carried it on his body for you and for me. All things are ready. Help yourself. You don't have to say, please, Jesus. All you got to do is come and help yourself and say, thank you, Jesus. And you can walk out of here liberated and free. But I have seen so many. Hear me, church. Don't you turn the television set off. The church starving to death while the drug addicts are coming in and they're taking it. It belongs to the church, but the dogs are eating the crumbs that fall from the master's table. Some of the greatest miracles I have ever seen came from folks that are not church folks. I love to preach to sinners. I mean, they love you. They believe you. Church folks will sit there and... I don't like his tie. <laughs> Shouldn't wear a striped shirt with that kind of suit. That's why I put it on. Just to get a reaction out of you. Are you listening to me? Yeah. Well, I might believe it. I know the Word of God says it. If he's nice, with, nice to me, I just might believe it. Let me live with it for a week to see whether it's going to work. Never get a thing. But here comes somebody that's never been to church. Never been to church. They can't wait. They hang on to every word. And even while the word's being preached, they receive it and drink it. A blind eye will open in the congregation. A deaf ear will unstop and not even know it. Before long, your crippled limb will be able to move. While the word of God is being preached because you reach out and take it. You're eating the crumbs that are falling. The rest of them, they're not eating. Even the dogs eat the crumb that fall from their master's table. She had a great thought, and this led, she received a great promise. Jesus said something to this woman. He never said to anything, anybody else. Woman! Great is your faith. Whatever you want, not you're going to get it, but whatever you want, you got it. Wow. What pregnant words. I mean, she didn't want no prayer cloth. She didn't want no M&Ms for him to carry and wear on his body. Not a bottle of oil to pray over. He said, whatever you want, you got it. How would you like him to come to you today and say, whatever you want? You that drove in here for 600 miles from Mississippi, he's saying the same thing to you. Whatever you want, you got it. Hands were already laid on you, it's yours. 
It belongs to you. You're not going home the same way you came. The promise has become a reality now. You that have had, you that have been diagnosed cancer, doctor saying there's no hope, but you've come today, Dodie laid hands on you, John has, I have, it's done! You shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover! I believe the promise! Whatever you want, whatever you want, I mean, he's putting it on her now. Most of us say, whatever you want to give me, Lord. He knows what I have need of and whatever he wants me to have. I'd rather be in this woman's shoes. When Jesus said, girl, whatever you want. Stop looking at your young man. Whatever you want, whatever you want, how would you like him to come to you and say, whatever you want? You got it. Well, he just said it. Whatever you want, you got it. And you know what she did? Thank you, Lord. Bye. Ain't no use in hanging around now. Forget about the after service. I got it now. See you next time around. She not only got the promise. Now, I'm through my introduction here now. She received a great victory. And her daughter was made whole. Hear me? From that very hour. Not while she was going home. But that very hour that Jesus said to her, whatever you want, whatever you want, it's yours. Simultaneously at home, the daughter was clothed and in her right mind because of a mama who would not give up. Mother, don't give up on your daughter. Don't give up on your children. Don't give up, but press your claim. You that are watching by television, Many of you lost your sons and your daughters to the drug culture, but God said he's going to save you and your household. Don't give up on them. Hang on to the horns of the altar. God has already heard your cry. Be expecting it. He's given it to you. It's mine. I've got it. By the faith of the living God, great is thy faith. When Jesus was on the boat with his disciples during the storm when it arose, he said, why is it you will not believe? And why is it you have no faith? Disciples. To a little woman, great thy faith you can move that faith into a stage of greatness by saying yes Lord I receive your word into my spirit and by the faith of God it's mine I will not be denied I'm going home a new person this is my day bow your heads we're going to pray Father, in the name of Jesus, I claim every sinner and every backslider that's watching this telecast, everyone that's in divine presence here at Lakewood Church, 
everyone that know you not. Lord, there may be those that have given up on God. They've ran away from you just like I did. But thank God you never gave up on us. You brought us back. There is a way back. Save every lost soul. Keep your heads bowed, please. Every eye closed. You that are watching by television, dial that number on your screen right now if you feel God speaking to your heart. Counselors are waiting to pray with you. But every one of you that are here today in Lakewood Church, I don't care how many times you try. I don't care how many times you fail. If you're here today, and if Jesus were to come, before you sat down for lunch, would you be ready to meet him? Only you and you alone. We're not here to judge you. We're here to pray with you. But in your spirit, the Holy Spirit's touching your heart. If you will respond to that word today, you will be the recipient of the greatest miracle of your life. If you want my prayer, if you want to know Christ, whom to know right is life eternal, I want you to throw your hand up when I say three. I'm going to count to three. Just simply one, two, and three. And if you want my prayer, three will be your signal. Shoot your hand up all over this place. I don't care how many times you tried, how many times you failed. Jesus is here to welcome you back. He'll never remember your sin against you. I'll guarantee that by what thus saith the Lord. Get your hand ready. Every man, every woman, every boy, every girl. Here's the first one. Here it is, one, counting down to eternity. Where will you spend it? July 29th, 12.30 will be the greatest day and time of your life. Lakewood Church in Houston, Texas. Here's the second one. Holy Spirit tugging at your heart. Here it is, two. Get your hand ready. 15 seconds counting down. God sends nobody to hell. We send ourselves by rejecting the only plan of salvation. Jesus is your only hope. Get your hand ready. Young person, I don't care how many times you tried and failed. He's wooing you back to the bleeding side of Calvary. Six seconds, counting down. Get your hand ready. Every man, every woman, every boy, every girl. Here's your signal. All over this great building. Get your hand ready. Here it is. Here it is. Three. Shoot it up all over this place. Quick, 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 quick. I see your hands. I'm going to pray for you right there where you are. You that have your hands raised, stand to your feet quickly. Quickly, stand right there where you are. I'm going to pray where you stand. What a beautiful, beautiful sign. Bow your heads. We're going to pray right there where you stand. Wait a minute. While you stand, I feel God tugging at other hearts. Please don't turn him aside. You feel that spirit tugging at your heart. Stand to your feet before I pray. I'll guarantee you that God will perform a miracle. Thank you, sir. Anybody else? Quickly. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. All over this building. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I'm so glad I waited. Thank you. Bow your heads. I'm going to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, every man, every woman, every boy, every girl that's standing all over this vast audience here in Lakewood Church. I come against you, Satan. You can no longer have them. This is your last moment with them. I adjure you by Jesus. Loose them and let them go. Lord, you said whatever I loose here on earth, you loose in heaven. Whatever I bind on earth, you bind in heaven. Satan, Satan, I bind you. I bind you in the name of Jesus. You'll never be able to torment these people this way again. This is their first day of eternal life. Hallelujah. You that are standing, look at me. You that are seated, keep your heads bowed. I'm only talking to you that are standing. Jesus said this. If you confess me before men, he said, I'll confess you before my Father in heaven. But he also said this. If you deny me before men, He said, I'll deny you before my Father in heaven. Let God know you're not ashamed that you refuse to deny him before men. The greatest confessor, the high priest, Jesus, the moment you do what I ask you to do, he'll begin to confess you before the Father. 
slip into the nearest aisle and meet me here for about two minutes. I want to pray for you here. Come quickly, if you will. Now, while they're coming, you that are watching by television, dial that number on your screen. They're coming by the hundreds all over this building. Coming, coming to Jesus. They're coming to Jesus. What a beautiful sight. The most important part of a service, people coming to the Lord. Thank you for watching Voice of Power. If you'd like to write to Dr. Shambach, the address is R.W. Shambach, P.O. Box A, Santa Ana, California, 92711. This program has been sponsored by the Trinity Broadcasting Network and your contributions. Glory to God. Isn't it wonderful to be on the front row where God is moving mightily by His Spirit? And just to think you can sit there in your home or lie there in your bed and participate in an old-fashioned Holy Ghost miracle revival. Thank God for 24-hour Christian television. Thank God for Trinity Broadcast Network. Thank God for Paul and Jan Crouch. They make it possible. And your love gifts is what keeps it coming into your home. I want to thank you personally for allowing me the pleasure and the privilege of being in your home with you and your family. And I trust it's a blessing to you. Why don't you drop Paul and Jan a letter and just pour your heart out to them. Let them know how much you do enjoy that. Will you do that and enclose a love gift? Now, you know there's nothing like being in a live uh, Holy Ghost revival meeting. And if you need any additional information about our ministry at all, about our tapes, our books, our records, if you have any prayer requests you want me to pray over, write me at my home office. That's R.W. Shambach, Tyler, Texas. The zip code is 75711. That's all the address you need. I appreciate you as a friend, and if we can be of help to you, it would be my pleasure to help you. The mailing address, once again, is R.W. Shambog, Tyler, Texas, 75711. When you write, request our list of services where we're going to be. We may be in your area in the near future, and that way you can keep in touch with me because there's nothing like being a live service. Thank you so much for allowing me the pleasure of spending this hour with you. And this is Brother Shambach reminding all of my friends everywhere, you don't have any trouble. All you need is faith in God. This is TBN, the Trinity Broadcasting Network.